A cell is kind of like a biological machine. It has tons of parts that need to work together in order for it to be functional. For instance, the cell needs a nucleus to protect the DNA, ribosomes to create proteins, an entire endomembrane system that separates all of the chambers where important biological reactions take place. This video covers section 2.2 of the AP Biology curriculum, cell structure and subcellular components. You can bet that this information will be on the AP test, so stick with us as we take a look at the most important subcellular components and their functions. Here is a quick overview of the topics we will be covering. First, we will take a look at ribosomes and how they create proteins based on the information from messenger RNA. Then, we'll take a quick look at the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi complex, two critical organelles within the endomembrane system. After the quiz, We'll run through the structures and functions of mitochondria, lysosomes, vacuoles, and chloroplasts. If you only need to review one of these topics, feel free to skip to the times outlined here. The big picture of section 2.1 is that life exists in a hierarchy. At the highest level is the biosphere, all life on Earth. But there are many smaller levels below this that must be in place for life to happen. In this section, we are going to look specifically at cellular organelles. Organelles are tiny components inside of cells that complete specific actions, allowing cells to carry out many processes and chemical reactions. In turn, these processes allow cells the ability to grow and reproduce. Let's start with the most ubiquitous cellular component, ribosomes. Ribosomes are tiny cellular components made of ribosomal RNA and proteins. They complete the process of translation by connecting amino acids based on the information they receive from messenger RNA. Let's take a closer look at their structure. Ribosomes are created out of multiple proteins and ribosomal RNA molecules, which weave together into a complex but very specific structure. Here, you can see the blue areas of rRNA and the orange areas of protein. This is a single subunit. Most organisms use ribosomes that need two subunits. The subunits come together perfectly, allowing the ribosome to grab onto a piece of messenger RNA. Once a piece of mRNA is found, the ribosome can begin its work. Each ribosome has three areas where transfer RNAs can fit, known as sites. Transfer RNAs enter at the A site. If they can hydrogen bond to the codons presented on the mRNA molecule, they can advance to the P site. Here, the ribosome catalyzes a reaction that removes the amino acid from the tRNA molecule and attaches it to the growing polypeptide chain. Finally, the used tRNA is discarded through the E site. You can remember these sites like this. A equals acceptance, P equals peptide bond formation, and E equals exit. The ribosome will slowly move along the mRNA molecule, reading each codon, matching it to a tRNA molecule, and bonding the appropriate amino acid to the growing chain. The polypeptide is completed when the ribosome reads the stop codon, allowing the ribosome to release the chain and start translating a new mRNA molecule. Aside from DNA, ribosomes are the only cellular components that are present in prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. In fact, when we look at the DNA of a bacteria and a human, we find very similar sequences that code for ribosome proteins. Both ribosomes also have two subunits, though eukaryotic ribosomes are slightly larger than prokaryotic ribosomes. This suggests that ribosomes are one of the most ancient cellular components and adds evidence that all life on Earth originated from a common ancestor. Let's take a quick break and do a thought experiment. These are bacterial cells growing on an auger plate. This is a bottlenose dolphin. Both of these organisms have ribosomes. Which organism do you think has more ribosomes per cell? If you said dolphin, you're right. Dolphins and all other eukaryotic organisms have more ribosomes per cell for one very simple reason. They have more DNA. Dolphins have roughly 2.4 billion base pairs, whereas a bacterial genome contains only 3.5 million base pairs. 
Bacteria typically only need thousands of ribosomes in each cell. With all that extra DNA, dolphins and other eukaryotes need hundreds of thousands to millions of ribosomes in their cells to create all of the proteins their genomes need to produce. Now, let's take a look at an organelle found in all eukaryotic organisms, the endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes just ER for short. The endoplasmic reticulum is a series of folded membranes that connect directly to the nuclear membrane, sort of like an extension of the nucleus itself. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum found in eukaryotes, the rough ER and the smooth ER, which have slightly different functions. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is a series of flattened discs that extend directly from the lipid bilayer that surrounds the nucleus. These flattened discs are covered with ribosomes. Unlike the loose ribosomes in the cytoplasm, these membrane-bound ribosomes deposit newly created polypeptides directly into the sac they are connected to. The lumen of the ER, the inside of the sacs, contains the perfect environment to fold certain proteins. By contrast, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum has no ribosomes attached to its surface. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a series of sacs that extend out of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Since it has no membrane-bound ribosomes, the smooth ER carries out a slightly different function. These chambers are responsible for creating lipids, like phospholipids, fat molecules, and lipid-based steroids. The next organelle, the Golgi complex, is also made of a series of flattened sacs. However, these sacs are not physically connected to the endoplasmic reticulum. Rather, the Golgi complex sits closer to the cell membrane, where it carries out several important functions. Some proteins need even more modification than the endoplasmic reticulum can provide, or they need to be distributed to specific places on the cell membrane. These proteins are packaged up in a transport vesicle and are sent to the Golgi complex. Here, the proteins are fully modified and mixed with other chemical constituents. There are three important functions that the Golgi complex completes, in addition to many minor functions. First, proteins can be packaged into secretory vesicles for exocytosis. These can be defensive proteins or proteins that are needed by other parts of an organism, but the important point is that they are expelled from the cell. Second, some proteins are needed to break down incoming nutrients. These go to lysosomes, which we'll cover further in a few slides. Lastly, some proteins needed to be added to the cellular membrane. These proteins are embedded into the vesicle, which is then merged with the current lipid bilayer, adding the proteins directly to the surface of a cell. You can now pause the video and answer these questions. There is another set of questions at the end of this video, and you can find all the answers through the quick test prep link in this video's description. Mitochondria are likely one of the most important organelles within eukaryotes, though they are also one of the smallest. In fact, they are about the size of an average bacterial cell. Let's take a closer look. Mitochondria have two membranes, the inner membrane and the outer membrane. While the outer membrane is smooth, the inner membrane contains many folds, called cristae, which provide more surface area for important reactions. Specifically, the inner membrane of mitochondria is home to the electron transport chain, an essential part of the process that extracts energy from glucose and stores it in the bonds of ATP for use elsewhere in cells. Mitochondria also have their own DNA and ribosomes, which create the proteins needed to create ATP energy. With these components, mitochondria provide energy for all eukaryotic cells, plants, animals, and single-celled eukaryotes alike. Next up are lysosomes. As discussed earlier, lysosomes are created by the Golgi complex. The Golgi packs a small vesicle full of protein enzymes that can break down various substances. These enzymes are referred to as hydrolases since they act to break apart polymers by catalyzing hydration reactions. Plus, the Golgi complex loads the surface of the new lysosome with transport proteins and receptors that help the lysosome make its way to a specified target. Lysosomes are pulled around the cell to connect with vesicles that contain nutrients, smaller organisms, and other substances that can be digested. 
the lysosome fuses with these vesicles, releasing the cocktail of enzymes. The enzymes digest the material into smaller monomers and usable pieces, which are released into the cytosol so the cell can access them. Once all of the nutrients have been absorbed into the cytosol, the waste products can be dumped back into the extracellular space. The phospholipids that make up this vesicle are then incorporated directly into the cellular membrane. Did you know that taking breaks during study se sessions can help you retain more information for the test? Take a quick break now, go for a walk, get some water, and scratch that itch that has been bothering you. When we come back, we'll finish up our tour of cellular organelles. A vacuole is a very simple organelle that serves a wide variety of purposes in different organisms. In general, a vacuole is a simple spherical membrane that holds whatever the cell needs it to hold. In animal cells and many single-celled organisms, the vacuole is an organelle that holds excess water and sometimes waste products. Essentially, eukaryotes use these chambers to help regulate the chemistry of the cytoplasm. Toxins, wastes, and byproducts are often stored in vacuoles so they cannot affect the chemistry of the rest of the cell. Plants also use a vacuole to store some byproducts, but plants use their vacuole for another purpose altogether. In most plant cells, there is one large vacuole that sits in the middle of the cell. When it is filled with water, it pushes outward on the cell wall. This is known as turgor pressure, and it gives plants the ability to stand tall without any bones or solid support structures. The last organelles we will look at in this lesson are chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are only found in algae and plants, and they have the ability to convert light, carbon dioxide, and water into sugar molecules. If we look closely at the structure of a chloroplast, you will notice that like mitochondria, these organelles also have a double membrane. Inside of the inner membrane of a chloroplast is a series of sacs known as thylakoids, which have the right proteins and molecules for completing the process of photosynthesis. The sugar created is exported to the cytosol of the cell, where it can be broken down by mitochondria to create energy in the form of ATP. Cells then use ATP to power all of the other important biochemical reactions they need to complete. You can now pause the video again and answer this second set of questions. You will find answers to all of the questions in this video through the quick test prep link below. If you are studying for the AP test, be sure to check out all of the other resources we have created for this standard to fully test your knowledge. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, leave us any comments or questions you have about cellular organelles, and subscribe to the Biology Dictionary channel for many more AP Biology videos. Good luck!